Okay, game three. Couple, lots of adjustments to the draft. Big time changes. Principally, probably the, mo the most important one is Twisted Fate coming out in the mid in the mid lane. Has been restored to some of his power where he was at uh, for Worlds two years ago, where he was the most picked champion. Uh, still not quite as strong as he was back then. Also, there's champions like Cassante now in the game, uh, which make it a lot harder to find those those angle picks sometimes. But the Cassante is on their team, so uh, <clears throat> looking to hold steady through Cassante, saying you know we're sick of having to warp the draft around what might be happening with these tanks in the mid lane. But Faker, of course, just happy to go back onto the Ari. Now Niski having put himself in a bad position, overstepping. Wish he would have flashed a little bit sooner, right? No reason to take any of this damage. You're taking it now as the wave is coming in. It's got to be Potion now, too. Right? You have an, you have an Ignite down as the, twi as the Twisted Fate. Enemy team El Yoyo. Oh, my gosh. Perhaps not expecting that we have a five-man invade here. Scion coming along for the ride. And you know what? Scion's going to do the Scion steal here. Maybe actually just uh, super leashing the Maokai. That would be incredible. We haven't seen this uh, since Worlds in like 2018 when Gam did it. They uh, power leveled the Nocturne in the jungle. It looks like Scion is actually just... Getting the Maokai tremendously ahead. Are they going? Are they going to do a four stack dive at level one? This would be a wonderful adaptation. It's a great time to do it. If you're T one, you're up two zero. You show this play that you know game theory dictates you should do something like this about ten percent of the time, five percent of the time. Something that is just a little bit harder for them to read. And let's check it out. Scion is level one. He takes the aggro. Of course, he's not going to mind if he dies. Because he's going to be able to clean up the rest of the kills in the Scion ult form. And Scion, despite not having a single CS, not having any experience to his name, gets a kill and an assist because that's what his kit does. Absolutely love the start of this game. Uh, incredible adaptation and the perfect time to do it. You're up 2-0. Best time to do it is when you're up 2-0 or when you're down 2-0. Uh, you make something like this that it becomes unpredictable, and now other teams are going to have to worry about this curveball that you might throw in the tournament. So that little win, tremendously in their favor. They're, end, they're ending up with multiple champions with extra gold. Bottom lane is going to be stuck at level 1 in a losing position forever. You see Hillisang just sitting on sitting on the ability here. Is this Does this mean that, I mean, she must have gone E. You see the E-start, not able to stun anyone under turret, so they're just happy to dive under there, get the two kills. Jinx, 101. Tom Kench, two assists for themselves. Maokai, two assists. And the fact that he got that full jungle clear for himself, and Lee Sin <clears throat> tried to come and match the gank rather than trying to steal uh, camps up from the top side, meaning Lee Sin doesn't even have a lead to show for it. One spot that you could be strong here is Cassante. <clears throat> Cassante had a chance to stack waves, push them in. Could not get a plate for himself because of the extra resistances that are in the in the turrets at this stage in the game. Up until five minutes, right? Much harder to get those out. Now, owner saying, hey, I've got the timer on your Raptor camp, so I'm going to go ahead and take this for myself. And uh, absolutely doing it. Ops to use the sapling as a shield. Here, as, a, as opposed to a way to help with the clear, could have done, could have accomplished both by taking one step to the left. Oh, beautifully done by owner. Using flash and W to dodge the spell from Annie. It does mean that it doesn't hit, which means that she keeps her stun proc. And now you just have this tremendous, tremendously difficult situation where you've got Boots Call No Potions versus Double Longsword and Doran's Blade plus, plus a uh, Red Pot, meaning that T1 is going to be able to steamroll this lane. Also, no Flash, no Cleanse. Now, they do take this fight in their jungle, showing exactly how big they are. Owner is just tremendously large. And my goodness, they're going to go for this dive as well. They're sitting at the edge of turret range. Uh, if you're El Yoyo, you come out and you max the, the E right here. You just mash it, get as many of these minions dead as possible. Now, <clears throat> owner will be able to get the experience here. <clears throat> Should not get credit for the kill. Leeson actually having a moment where he might have been like, Q, 
turn, run up field. Then you turn back to them as if you're flying back with the resonating strike. See if you can bait the Q from the Maokai. And if you can, take another step to the side. You land the Q. Maybe there's a world where you can get a return kill uh, there, which would, would have been absolutely incredible. But would have taken a mistake on the Maokai. You would have had to bait the mistake. Uh, but yeah, you know, it's, it's a play that pros are capable of making. <clears throat> And I would have, you know, we saw an attempt. We saw an attempt. He, he went for the cue, maybe a split moment too late. It's one of those plays that uh, very, very rare do you see it, right? Because you have to be certain of your own death. And you need to be thinking about exactly the champion, what tools they have to interrupt you from coming out of Q2. And making out of the situation. Now, here we go. This is what we do want to see, <clears throat> which is Lee Sin up in the top lane with your Fed Cassante. Oh, he misses the cue. <sighs> Yo, yeah. Cyan is going to get a trade kill for himself, maybe even two. Q3 is actually just going to help Zayu stay in position, but the uh, movement speed is gone, and they end up going for a one-for-one -one trade. Now, Mad Lions, tiptoeing the line, may be able to get something for themselves, but that's going to be exactly what Ari wants, is three champions just stuck together. They even end up feeding the last kill to Guma. Now, look at this. Great habits. Not a single person on this team is leeching that plate. They're going to leave everything for Gumi Yusi so that he can get the maximum amount of gold. Oh boy. The Maokai Ari combination. Can't even really maximize, you know, Merc Treads type builds, which would be good against them. The fact that the back half of the Ari Q uh, is going to be true damage means you're always going to be able to get that in. And also, their CC is enough, right? <clears throat> Maokai W is going to guarantee an Ari charm every single time. You have a displacement again with Maokai using his Q. And it's uh, it's always going to be enough to let Ari get full full stacks out on everything. Now, like we said, <clears throat> one point of strength on the map, right? That entire play, the power-leveled Maokai, it, me it means that Scion is slightly far farther behind. But that being said, this is a 2-2-1 two, two, and one, uh, Scion. Uh, has actually caught up for himself in experience. Ooh, Karzi actually almost eating himself into that R, into the Maokai uh, tendrils. That was bizarre. Kind of, kind of still indicative that Karzi's still not over game one. Uh, zero three bot lane zero four. That's what you end up getting right when you try to overdo it. <clears throat> Now, something that we see from Faker in the RE trade pattern, something that he does as good as anybody in the world, when he does land Charm, you'll see him take a step back before throwing his Q. This is to make it so that the Q return happens <clears throat> more concisely. Sometimes he's just reaching out with the Q anyways, but anytime that he hits that Charm and it's at that like three-quarter to you know 80% range, he'll always take a step back. Because if you just sit there and you throw your Q, right, the target's here, Q will pass through, and then while it's coming back, they come out of the charm and they can sidestep it. However, if you take a step back, your Q goes through and then comes right back, right through them, sort of like a Draven Axe, or I should say the Draven Ultimate. And uh, <clears throat> that little iteration, that little quarter second step that you take to the side means that you're actually going to hit both sides of your Q rather than just one. And... and Especially being the back half that matters against a lot of these champions that have better resistances. Uh, absolutely a meaningful adaptation that you really only see at the upper, upper, upper echelons of play. Try it out in practice tool, right? If you're an RE player, uh, go go ahead and set up some, some tokens, right? Set up some dummies in the river, <clears throat> land your charm, and test the different ranges and see exactly what the DPS count is, right? That The DPS will give you an indicator of how concisely your damage is being dealt. Um, a little bit, you know, thing when you're testing it to be careful of is that when you're going just E into Q, yes, it'll be fast, go E, Q, and it comes back because it's not moving. But when you add in the fact that maybe they dodge uh, versus not being able to dodge and you see that you can deal that damage because the kickback happens faster, the return damage, and you'll be able to see, uh, practice that iteration, and then see if you can do it in your game. 
<clears throat> if you do get it, I'd love to see some highlights. Pop them in the comment section uh, or let me know if there's other tricks, <clears throat> champions like that, where you just make a little change in position and it makes a huge difference on what the champion can do. Now, T1 flexing their tremendous lead. 4K in the lead already. Ari using multiple stacks of the Spirit Rush. Oh, Malachi knocking Lee Sin out of the dash with his Q. Ends up keeping Faker alive. And uh, I do believe he's still got one stack left on the Spirit Rush. He might opt to use it right over this wall. No, it looks like it just went down. Okay. That's something you see these laners also with Ari, right? They're going to keep that cooldown active for as long as possible, and they'll wait till the very, very end. So now we'll see a standard rotation. Anytime you break a bottom turret pre-14, you're actually going to see the marksman come over to top lane and try to get plates over here before coming to mid. Once it's post-14 minutes... You'll see much more often that they will just go to mid lane, right? It's too important to be in the middle of the map, being able to go left to right. But while there's plates to be had on the side of the map, might as well go get them. Ari taking some chunks, has to flash away from the Twisted Fate. Can we see Annie set up the Twisted Fate? Look at this chain CC, I love it. You see that pause by Niski. You slow down the DPS and you say, you know what? You're still stunned for a little bit. I don't need to hit you yet. You're also out of tools because we know you don't have an ultimate. And we know you don't have flash. So no rush for getting this yellow card down. Better to let your teammates have an extra half second to get into position to deal more damage. And the prize is a dead Ari uh, with a shutdown, right? So that was a 304 little bounty going in their pocket. Still down 5k. Still going to be a huge problem. <clears throat> now one way that you can punish this jinx side lane is to go aggress upon it right say you got you're pretty kind of you know kind of stuck on the side lane you've got walls on multiple sides meaning we can go and just cut off the angle but uh guma is wise to it and you're going to see a move over you're like yeah that's enough you know i broke bot you guys showed your aggression up in the top lane that's fine i'll just camp out here and we'll let ari who is much more mobile who has an extra level on me uh, and extra health be able to take this side lane duty as it is their prerogative right much safer for the mid laner to exist now while there's two champions here expect Ari to just go for a little bit of wave poke and uh, and come back out <clears throat> go into fog of war make enemy team wonder whether or not they're trying to get strong for the jinx now let's see oh look at all that damage Carrier stepping up. Actually could have gotten lethal by tanking turret shots. Perhaps didn't realize how much damage Guma Yusi would be dealing there. Now here we go. Ari does have some tools, but not all of them. They end up seeing a R into Q1, Q2. Is enough to kill the Ari, but not enough to get out <clears throat> unscathed. Ooh, nice little, nice little head game there. Owner and Chasey both saying like, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna use my ability yet. Malkai doesn't want to use the W yet because if Cassante uh, responds with his W, then he's just gonna push the Malkai back, and not get rooted up at all. Also going to be able to then ult him towards his own turret. So Malkai says, "I'm not casting mine yet," and Cassante said, "I'm not casting mine yet." Right? I'm gonna save this for when you use your W. I will use mine. So uh, nice little you know fakes are going at each other. Finding an angle it looked like imminent damage, but that is the sign of not just respect for the teammates, but how tight these guys are playing. They're not going to leave anything up to chance. They are going to take every microsecond of advantage that they can and never play loose. And you see that at the end of the games too, right? When it's time to win, they went and they won. They didn't sit there waiting for respawns under the turret. This team does not care about showboating at all. Zero desire to try to outplay anybody because that they know, you know, when you're playing for T1, the only outplay that matters is whether or not you win the trophy. Did you win the game? That's it. You're playing for the most storied franchise in the history of League of Legends next to <clears throat> the greatest player of all time. What are you, you going to do that he hasn't already done? You know? And frankly, T1 has done it for themselves as well, but they fell short at the World Championship. So they're saying, you know what? There's nothing here 
for us to get by trying to make highlight plays. We've we've played the game before. We've made these plays. The only thing that's left for us to do is to rule the world. And the only way we do that is by not caring about the showboating plays. You see this. Like, it's a tremendously powerful thing when these great players put the benefit of their team over their own egos and and their own brand, right? Because make no mistake about it. If you make a flashy play, that gets you fans. That gets you a better stream. <clears throat> But the other thing that will do that, world championship, baby. <clears throat> Cross all your T's, dot all your I's, and T1 just dominating. Basically, ever since 12 minutes in the in the first game, they've been they've been dominating everything, right? They fell tremendously far behind, could have lost to the game right there. And if game one uh, goes goes by the wayside, maybe maybe they actually lose this series. But ever since coming back, you, the will to compete has been gone from Mad Lions, or they're just getting completely outclassed, one or the other. A little bit of both, I think. <coughs> 16 minute and 40 second victory, is that where we're going to get here? Gumusu's flash is down, but check this out, right? No one's stretching, no one's reaching for these kills. Boom, finish the job, get it done, move on to the next round incredibly well played t1 nice job good effort mad hold your head high reset you've got another job to do you're not out of this tournament you can still come back you've shown that you can take it to this team i want to see it in the next round here we go hope you guys enjoyed it if you like this video please consider liking and subscribing it helps the channel out a lot i'll catch you guys next time keep it surreal peace